Hey, what's up everybody? This is Justin here. I'm here to talk about the recent 25th anniversary of the Japanese launch of Sega's last console, uh, the Sega Dreamcast. So here's the console right here. And um, just uh, earlier this summer, I bought this uh, Dreamcast uh, pillow. Um, I use it a lot and I love it very much. But uh, yes, so the reason why I wanna talk about this is because um, Yes, the Strega Dreamcast, it's one of my favorite consoles of all time. And um, since it pertains to the Japanese launch, a majority of my memories in relation to the Dreamcast mostly relate, relate to the um, original Japanese software or releases. And the thing is, um, I got my first Dreamcast. I now actually own seven or eight. Um, that's another story for another time. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, it was like the first console I ever got um, imported. Um, back when I was a teenager living in a Mormon town in Arizona, there was this video game store called Game Zone, which closed a couple of years ago. Um, most, not really due to the pandemic per se, but, um, you know, competition, all that. And during its prime, one of its main appeals is that it sold, um, games and consoles from Japan. And through this particular store is how I first learned of the, um, import scene of Sega Saturn. This was the mid nineties, um, around 96, 97. And um, I remember my brothers and I, we got our first Saturn of May of 97, which is another entirely funny story of its own, which I'll talk about in another video. And um, at first I was skeptical of the Saturn. Uh, when it re first released in May of 95, it launched at $400. It came out, um, a month before my 12th birthday, so $400, especially in May 95, you know, a fuckload of money. And it didn't really have that many games that I wanted to play yet. And then here we go two years after its launch, uh, it's now less than a hundred bucks and we got a deal that comes with three free games. And those games came with Virtua Fighter 2, Daytona USA, and Virtua Cup. And I spent the next day playing the Saturn all day. And as to why, another story, another time. But yes, and later on, um, it was around that time we were going to a place called Game Zone in Arizona, and that's where we first learned of the um, import scene as really just Saturn. Um, yeah, Saturn got some really good games in the U.S. Um, to a certain extent, but like nowhere near what uh, Japan had. So keep in mind, yes, Saturn was a colossal failure in North America and Europe, but it was a total success in Japan, and... Um, through this store, we saw like, oh, they got X-Men versus Street Fighter. And later that Christmas of 97, we got that along with Dragon Ball Z Legends. Um, you know, Dragon Ball Z Legends in retrospect to some people may not be a good game, but to um, me and my brothers and our friends at the time, that was the best DBZ game that you had to get. Of course, um, Hyper Dimension was there but um, for the Super Famicom, but it was actually more expensive to get that compared to um, the Saturn games or the CDB games in general, because cartridges were still pretty fucking expensive. But yeah, and then slowly we were kind of getting more into the Japanese version of the Saturn, and we got a lot of really fun games. Mostly we're getting the fighting games because um, those games required little to no Japanese comprehension. And um, even though when I was going to high school, um, starting of 98, um, my high school was offering Japanese classes, I got the highest grade, and even by the end of my freshman year, that wasn't good enough for me to, let's say, play, I don't know, Panzer Dragon RPG um, in Japanese. Um, that wouldn't be for another few more years, actually. But yes, um, later on, so um, here we are, November 98, and um, a few days later, my local import store got, um, what was it, the Japanese Dreamcast. And there was only four titles available, July, Pen Pen, um, Godzilla Generations, and Virtua Fighter 3 TV. And the thing about the Japanese release of the Virtua Fighter 3 TV for the Dreamcast is it did not have a versus mode, but later the American, the um, international versions would have one. Now I'm surprised that Sega in Japan did not eventually release um, a new version that included one, um, considering the popularity of that part of their game, and now hearing it's now getting an online version for the arcades, I'm surprised Sega never really went with it. And um, they really didn't start really selling the Dreamcast until, like, they got Sonic Adventure. And I remember playing those games. I remember playing, um, Virtua Fighter 3 and Sonic Adventure at that store and Marvel vs. Capcom 1. 
And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And at the time, my brothers and I felt that like, okay, um, maybe we should get a Japanese Dreamcast. Like, we don't know if you'll get the same treatment it got in the U.S. Um, to a certain extent, we were right and wrong. But um, I remember later that May in 99, towards the end of the school year, I had just finished the ninth grade. My br one brother was just finished the eighth grade. And my youngest brother just finished the sixth grade. And... Um, we convinced our parents to get us a Sega Dreamcast. The launch price for the US was $200, but we got a Japanese one for $250. And some of the games we got were Virtua Fighter 3, Marvel vs. Capcom 1, uh, Sonic, Godzilla, and um, maybe King of Fighters? Oh, no, that came out like, oh yeah, my birthday was the following month, and I remember getting King of Fighters then. But yeah, uh, we were really satisfied with it. And, um, yeah, Sonic Adventure was in Japanese, but, like, we were able to figure out the game without any, um, advanced comprehension at all, which was pretty fun. But we were really into fighting games back then, so Marvel vs. Capcom 1, uh, we really enjoyed that. Then when we got King of Fighters Dream Match 99, which was technically 98, um, we were able to enjoy that. And then as the summer of 99 went on, a lot of great games came out that, and it was also like our birthdays around that time. So we also got Soul Calibur. It was the second game ever to get um, a 40 in Famitsu when it was a big deal to get a 40 in Famitsu. I still remember those days. I also remember we got um, some other cool games. Um, eventually Street Fighter Alpha 3 and then Street Fighter 3. Man, um, for fighting games, this was it. And... Um, of course, later, and of course, Power Stone. And, um, yeah. Um, we were really satisfied with this console, and to this day, um, yeah, we're still pretty satisfied. I mean, I remember when the video, Angry Video Game Nerd, when he reviewed Seaman, or some of you like to pronounce as Seaman, um, he, when he reviewed this game, it's funny, he says, like, the fact that he, this is the only Dreamcast game he ever had to review up to that point um, was a true testament to how good the Sega Dreamcast really is. And I think the only other Dreamcast game he ever bashed was, like, this one racing game by Acclaim, like, the Spirit of 1920-something. Um, I wouldn't remember it, but anyway. Um, the fact that, you know, out of all of his episodes, he's only done two Dreamcast games, that is a true testament to how, how great the Dreamcast software library is. And I know to this day, the homebrew, homebrew community, they're still making games for it. I mean, what made Dreamcast great in that sense is that... Um, it was easy to program for, and a lot of the development tools that are in use today can be used with the Dreamcast. And, um, and I think thanks to that, um, you know, we still it's still going to this day in its own unique sense. And I still support it. And the only modern game series that I follow these days is, ironically, a Sega game, the Like a Dragon or Yuga Gotsuku or Yakuza, or whatever you want to call it. That's the only modern game I follow for the most part. And, yeah, um, other than that, um, of course, it's so-called um, spiritual predecessor Shenmue. It's my favorite game of all time to this very day. I still enjoy that game. I still play that game on an annual basics. And, uh, yeah, um, what can I say about the Dreamcast? Um, unfortunately, of course, a lot of people feel that, like, a lack of DVD may have killed it. Um, I don't know about that to some degree, like... You know, if adding DVD, it could have cost them their hundred or hundred fifty dollars. Um, I know that um, I think Saturn being launched at four hundred partially killed it, and um, and I think they. Won't, I know that Sega under Stoller's um, um, administration at the time, he wanted it as cheap as possible. So I think price is what um, really attracted me to it. Um, at the time, I mean, I don't think DVD playback would have helped. I think it just made it more expensive than it should have. Uh, feel free to disagree with me on that. But one thing we can agree on, it just has man, ma many of the best games ever. And um, so much of it still stands out, um, still holds up to this day. And, um, and it's kind of unfortunate that, you know, it had to end the way it did. But, um, you know, it's still here and we still remember it. And I still play it to this day.